Well, my investigation led me to a transcript of the IRS. So we just felt like uh, that was too close to the federal government to be done in that fashion without the federal government knowing full well and having plans of its own for the Contras and the use of that minesweep in connection with the Contras. When the jurors were done listening to him, some of them even wanted to reverse their verdict. We started the penalty phase like 3 o'clock in the evening, and we knocked off about 6.30, I think. And during that time, I presented government in its three-piece suits and ties to the jury. And that pre presentation with three government witnesses was so powerful that the next morning when we came to court, the judge called us into his chambers and said he had two notes from two different jurors wanting to change their verdict on the guilt phase to not guilty. Who were these government witnesses um, 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 that, that came forward to uh, uh, talk about Barry Seal? One of them was Lieutenant Thompson of the state police describing how the government complicity in the Barry, with Barry Seals uh, and, and when he caught Barry Seals red-handed after all of this, after uh, Barry Seals had been sentenced in Florida, and he caught Barry Seals still smuggling, caught him red-handed at, at the dock, and the, the DEA and the CIA showed up and told the state police to butt out and took over the operation. So a wily old New Orleans lawyer pierced a massive government conspiracy to smuggle drugs into this country. Barry Seals wasn't told to cooperate with the DEA officer. The DEA officer was told to cooperate with Barry Seals. And if you'll read that IRS transcript, you'll realize that he was running the DEA operation in Miami, Florida. He was flying out of Florida with DEA money millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, of which the DEA, DEA has never accounted for. Nobody knows what happened to it. And he was flying that money out uh, on his own, with his own airplane, and doing his own thing at all these times. Barry Seal was not just a casual part of our nation's covert intelligence. He was right underneath Oliver North. He helped direct it. When g government in involves itself in the activities like the CIA and start subverting natural events in the natural course of history, that's where government itself becomes the criminal. If you had the job of hiding every General Motors factory and every Chevrolet dealership and General Motors dealership in the country, could you hide all of that unless it was in plain sight? Yeah, of course not. So this whole thing is hiding in plain sight, isn't it? Yeah, sure it is. Absolutely. If you want to, I'll tell you something else. You want a scandal in this country? Investigate retired DEA agents. Investigate their net worth and put it all together. If the American people don't make its government start behaving soon, we're, we're going to reach the point of no return. There's only one conclusion. If Barry Seal is working for the CIA, then the CIA is controlling the drug trade. And if the CIA controls the drug trade, we could be in for a really long spell of presidents who were previously southern governors. But this show is not about the CIA, and it's not about Bill Clinton and southern governors and what they will or won't do to become president of the United States. It's not even in the end about the heroic, and we mean that word, law enforcement efforts of Russell Welch. And it's certainly not about the lies of people who have spent their lives sucking off the tit of shameful secret government black operations. It's about two boys lying dead on the train tracks, and others like them across America. It's about a mother's pain at being unable to interest anyone in bringing the killers of her son to justice. It's about the cost of the drug war which has been conducted against the American people by people from their own government who were sworn not to threaten but protect them. When we come back, you'll see two special features on our show that you won't see on any standard network news magazine. First, you'll witness the fitting together of the pieces of the puzzle. And then in a real network first, you'll hear the naming of the names.
Welcome back. As promised, now we play Connect the Dots. First, take a look at this map and think about the simultaneity of events. At the same time, Dan Harmon is terrorizing Saline County, Oliver North is lying to Congress, and the cocaine is flying off the store shelves down at the neighborhood drug corner. And flying in from Central America, the cocaine comes in planes like these. They look like military cargo planes. They're actually classified as instruments of war, and their export is controlled. But because they're registered to private contractors at the Ferry Seal, Major General Richard Secord, you know, the boys, we're supposed to maintain and observe some legal fiction that our government has nothing to do with it. What kind of fools do they take us for? Did you ever in your wildest dreams in law school think that you might entertain the idea that the United States government smuggled drugs? Absolutely not. Take Dan Harmon. He worked with the government for a long time in Arkansas. Well, after 15 hours of deliberations, a federal jury found the former 7th District Prosecutor guilty on 5 of 11 felony charges. After two days of deliberations, the jury found Harmon guilty of 5 of 11 counts, guilty of drug charges, racketeering, and extortion. The people that were actually involved in the murders have received protection. The people who have been involved in protecting them have received promotions. Not only have they not been indicted for those murders, they have been protected all around for any other criminal activity. Prime example, Dan Harmon. So Dan Harmon is a drug thug, but a local one. Still, think of the things he got away with. Dan Harmon stood accused of stealing drugs from his drug task force, putting them back on the street, and cutting deals with drug suspects for money and sexual favors. At the end of his trial, he left the federal courthouse guilty on five of 11 charges, the most serious racketeering. The name Dan Harmon first came to light in 1988. Harmon was a county prosecutor taking on one of the biggest murder cases in the state's history. The deaths of Kevin Ives and Don Henry, two teenagers found dead on a railroad track in Saline County. Harmon resurfaced three years later when he was slapped with four federal charges for tax evasion. Harmon was subsequently thrown in jail for refusing to take a drug test. After 19 days behind bars and an appeals court hearing, he was freed from his first stint behind bars. His freedom continued until July of 1992 when Harmon was found guilty of not filing a tax return for 1988. He was then fined $25 and sentenced to two weeks home detention. Harmon hit headlines once again when four bricks of fake cocaine were found in his ex-wife's apartment. The bricks were evidence belonging to Harmon's 7th District Drug Task Force. Three months later, Harmon's ex-wife, Holly Duvall, accused him of kidnapping and assaulting her. He was jailed again and this time refused to leave in the hope of getting a speedy trial. It was during this time period he began a hunger strike in jail, underwent a psychiatric evaluation, and even shaved his head. Throughout this time in the spotlight, Harmon often criticized the media and even hit an Arkansas Democrat Gazette reporter. Later that month, he negotiated a plea arrangement. Several of his charges from kidnapping to disorderly conduct were reduced in exchange for his resignation from office. That day came in July of 1996 as Dan Harmon cleared his office and moved to the Gulf. Listen to Dan Harmon talk about his conviction and let your mind roam. Who do you think Dan Harmon reported to? Every one of those counts that they convicted me of extortion of. Every bit of that money went to where it was supposed to go. But Dan Harmon hasn't been charged with the capital crime of murder for the train deaths. Could it be because he belonged to a drug distribution organization that is integrated vertically just like General Motors? Remember the map we showed you earlier? Remember the simultaneity of events? I believe that it began with the CIA smuggling drugs in and out of MENA through Barry Seal's operation. So whoever was giving 